Hey everyone, what's going on? Joey here and Julia, because today we're finally gonna talk about our massive trip that is coming up this weekend. We're gonna be climbing to almost 5,000 feet, which is the highest we've ever climbed. So before we get started and tell you everything, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up. If you don't, Julia will not like you. So, no, it's not true? Not true? No. All right, let, let's get started. So, this is what seems to be what? What's wrong? What was that? That's that's my transition. <laughs> that's my transition. What? I do that in every single video. So this is the highest mountain we've ever climbed, and we've been, I guess you could say, since New Year's Day, we've been preparing yes. for higher altitudes. We started at a small mount, was it what, eight, uh, 200 and something feet? Yeah, we started with something very small and then it just progressively got taller and taller. It's like every like three weeks to about a month, we're climbing a new mountain with a new altitude. The last mountain we did, actually, what was the name of that mountain? Was that Bear Mountain? No, that was one of the, you know, that was a 500 to, foot one. I would one. actually have to find it. The last one we did was uh, 3,500. And that one was eight. amazing because mm -hmm. we climbed through fog and we got to the top of this mountain, and if you looked on our Instagram, we've got photos and videos yeah. of this. It's cool because we're above the fog, and so you're sitting on there, we actually ate lunch up there, and you watch the fog kind of roll through the valley, which was really, really awesome. And it so- Gives you the feeling that you are above the clouds. Yes. It's really amazing. You're flying with the planes. Yes. And it's also really weird because how quiet it was. Yes. You can actually like it record, really was all, quiet. you could do like a, um, a studio recording because so much cedar wood, uh, cedar trees, which is a lot of studios actually have cedar in it to take in all the sound. I know, now to I'm getting my audio yeah. stuff. But um, we've been preparing for this for a while now. And we asked you guys on Instagram several weeks ago, would you like update videos of what we're doing, how we're planning, what we're bringing along with us before we do it? And because this weekend, we yeah. leave Friday, we're like, oh, well, let's sit down and explain what we're doing. And so, we're gonna go climb the White Face Mountain. It's in upstate New York. It's about, I would say, is that 60 miles away from the uh, kilometers, actually, I think, from the Canadian border. What was I'm it? not sure not how sure? far away it is. It is, I know for a fact that it's about a five hour drive for us from home to the mountain itself. It is in Wilmington, New York. And, um, what what are our heights? It's not it's not five thousand. It's like four thousand one. So the it's the highest peak of ADK and um, it's at sits at four thousand eight hundred and sixty seven feet. Now what's interesting about this mountain? There's actually a lot of cool history behind it. First and foremost, the Olympics took place here in 1980. So there's actually an abandoned ski area over there. And I ski know, lift. Ski lift. I know mm -hmm. that while we're over there, we're gonna actually be going by that because it was used for the Olympics. And just like many Olympic venues, after a while they've become abandoned. I mean, you go back in history and you look. Yeah. It all kind of just like fell apart. So as we're climbing, we're gonna see cool stuff like that. Before this, they actually had a military outpost over there during World War II because they were learning that at that point, the Nazis and all of them, I know again in history, I know you're learning history, but um, <laughs> back then they were realizing that the Nazis were climbing mountains. So we had to learn how to do that here in the States. And so they picked some high mountains in New York and that's the mountains they went on. There's actually a plaque we'll, we'll actually climb by. And this mountain also has a castle and a they couple other things. They used that as a training facility for hiking. Yeah. That you did not mention. Well, that's what I mean. They were, they, they were training on there for high altitudes. So anyway, Let's go ahead and break down the mountain. The mountain itself is pretty steep. I mean, there's an actual part that's called the Marble Mountain. What is it so called? to get to the White Face Summit, you actually have to climb through, you start at the trailhead in Wilmington and you have to go over a mar Marble Mountain first and then to the Easter Mountain and then to the summit of the White Face. So now- So the Easter Mountain is sits at about 4,239 feet. So now the way you have to look at this is, it's not just like a, Click little like, One steep walk height, up. Yeah. It, it is just really, really steep. So you need a lot of equipment for this. And I feel like we're, we're look, we're still amateurs at this, but we're learning as we're we learning go. learning as we go. Honestly, what works, what doesn't work. I mean, we've climbed mountains now in different, I would say different atmospheres in the sense of we've done sunny days, rainy days, snowy days. We've done different so weather. many different weather conditions to the point to where I think we kind of have snow storms. Yes. I think we kind of have a good understanding of what we need, what we're bringing with us. And so right now, a lot of you guys had questions about our gear. So we're like, oh, well, let's explain the gear. Now, one thing I do have to add in, if you do Google Whiteface Mountain, it is intimidating to look at. Yes. But interestingly enough, 
you can actually get to the top without climbing. They actually have a, a road. road. I think Roosevelt actually put together the funds for this to put a to put a road to the very very top. And then at the very top is a restaurant. There's an elevator to take you up to the remaining 300 feet and a couple other things. But we're not chickening out, everyone. We're gonna climb yeah. up. How many? How many? Uh, what was it? How many miles up are we going? Miles? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't. Doesn't you say it's a? It, isn't it like it eleven? Say. Isn't it eleven mile trail? Well, the trail itself is about ten point one. But from reading all the reviews that people that people have climbed, they say it's closer to twelve to thirteen miles. So it's gonna be it's very very up hard. Up and down. And in order to prepare for this, we actually are going up on Friday. We booked a hotel room for the night. And we had to reserve a like six thirty or seven o'clock parking space at the bottom because they only give out about That's eighteen very spots every it, single it time. It started every day. in twenty twenty one. You have to reserve a spot. You cannot just go park and go hiking. Um, there's only seventy five or eighty for spots the for the day. So if you didn't get one, your car will be towed, and as they call walk-ins on the trail, are not going to be per permitted. You will be turned around. And they do this. For I don't know how they're going to enforce that. Who's going to be there to well, so oversee this walk-in? I do. I don't know. I do understand that when you get to the gate, like we had to get a certificate showing that we we it's free to actually get. You just show them. You just have to here. reserve it. And for every hour, they only allow in like 17, 18 cars to get to 75. And they only so do that. So it doesn't that, get overcrowded. And they do that from 630 to about 2. And that's because sunsets are on 845, 850. They want to make sure there's enough time to get everyone off the mountain before sunsets because there's no lights. I mean, they close it at dusk. So, um, but anyway, so we're going to show up really early and hopefully be done the mountain what? What are we thinking here? If we start climbing at 7.30, we're assuming it's going to take three I'm hours up? That, I'm hoping that the whole thing will take us around five, six hours. That's what we are hoping. But it honestly all depends since we've never been there. We don't know how the trail is like. Considering that half of the trail that is actually leading from the trailhead to the, um, to the Marble Mountain up to the Easter is actually not maintained. So, so it tricky. gets it gets pretty muddy there. So you just you sort of like when you own whatever happens happens. Um, but the trail from from Easter Mountain to the to the um, White Face is maintained and is marked. And now, but the rest of the trail is not. The so. other things you have to think of is did it rain a lot leading up to this, which means it'll be a lot muddier. Which we have certain poles to do different Depend terrain as well as shoes. You have to think about shoes that you're gonna wear that have to be waterproof as well. And so. because you're hiking for so long and it's so hard on your body, the night before you have to make sure you eat enough cal calories, I can't speak today, calories, so that your body can burn it and have enough fuel yeah. ready to go. And we have some meals that are actually coming in, which are free, for, what are they, frozen dried or they take yeah. the water out of one of they're dehydrated meals. Which you just add in like boiling water, which we're going to go ahead and bring packets that actually heat up to 100 degrees. And then add it in, and then we can actually eat it. So that's actually going to be interesting. And keep in mind, we're going to be filming majority of this. Maybe yeah. not like every single second of it. I'll try to make it like a ten minute video of us starting halfway through up to the top, what we're eating, relaxing, the views, things like that. Um, but let's show them what we have in our back. Yeah. I feel like this is like a kids show in the sense of like Dora the Explore. Explore. Let me say that again. I feel like it's a kids show like Dora the Explorer because we're like, oh, what's in our backpack? So let's do this, shall we? Yes. So we want to share with you guys what's actually in our backpack. It's a lot easier to do this on the floor because there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out of here. First of all, you have to understand we're not sponsored by anyone. We're still amateurs, um, but we're I mean, learning as we go. So if you are a professional hiker out there and you see any mistakes, please let us know. Actually, we would actually, actually be love dead that. serious. Definitely let we us would know. Love any sort of comments or pointers on how to improve our, <laughs> yeah, our little setup here yeah now the first thing i have to admit is that these are day packs there's many different kind of backpacks you can get these ones are specifically made for i would say day maybe hiking. like 15 hours of hiking it's enough for water a few little things you may need along the way we're not camping we're food yeah we're not camping so we don't need any of the massive like foam or sleeping bags or tents so right. this one's created just to go ahead and be light and we can carry up the mountain and down the mountain. So uh, first thing is we got different bags here. Mine's actually yes, a little bit do. bigger than yours. Uh, so I've got I the have Osprey Hike Light 18. And mine is the Osprey Daylight Plus. Now I got a bigger one because I've got more stuff in mine than yours. Yes. Uh, just because I, I guess I can carry more so weight than you. So let's just start with the poles. 
just so we can get that out of the way so we can All get right. inside of these bags. So, we've got these hiker poles. We actually got these on Amazon. You know what? Maybe we'll actually link below some of this stuff because a lot of these things we got on Amazon or REI because yeah. REI was having a massive sale the day that we actually randomly went in. Um, but Which we had no idea. Yeah. Which these are trail buddies. We actually have the same ones except hers is blue slash green and mine is red. Now, these are perfect because you can go ahead and tailor these to your height. Obviously, I'm a lot smaller than Julia, so my millimeter height on these are going to be a lot bigger. I guess so they do smaller. come with a booklet, so what you do is in the booklet, you see what your height is and what number to adjust it to. It has inches and centimeters, so who does not know inches, like myself, I'll go with the centimeters. So my height is... What, so what is it, five seven in inches. So my poles need to be adjusted to 48 inches, which is 120 centimeters. So okay. this is my height of the pole. And I'm going for 115. And so this is my height. Make sure you tight this. Make it tight. And to, to, um... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm jabbling. <laughs> no. Make sure it's tight and you can put your yeah. full body weight on it before you use it. And it doesn't it. fold. Uh, because if you don't, you're going to fall down the mountain, and that's not fun. Now, the one thing I do want to point out is the actual tip. The tip on here is created for terrain that is not muddy. It's rocks. It's maybe a little bit grass seeds, hard dirt. They come with many different tips, some for snow, some for mud. We're bringing the mud ones with us because yes. if it rains the day before, the mountain will be muddy, and th this is here what they look like. the mud pieces to it. Ooh. It's got on the that. bottom like a little teeth so in it, so that they can dig off. into it. You put this screw that on. on, and you're good to go. And you put your tip back on it, so you screw on to this part right here. So now you go. you're good for the mud. Now with the snow, it's more of like an X, because the wider a base, the less likely you are to fall through that right. snow. So you do, you actually can remove this and just use as a spike here for the for the snow. So that takes care of our hiking pole. Now I actually have something different in my bag. You have, do you have your hat with you or not? Yes, I do. I have my hat here for many reasons. One is because I don't want sunburn, which we do have sunblock for, but I don't like bugs or ticks. So mosquitoes. <laughs> this will keep them away. I just have my Columbia. This will keep them away and it makes me look cool, right? I look cool. Oh, absolutely. If you go like this. You look absolutely Hi. awesome. You don't, you don't like it? You don't like it? All right. So, Got our hat here all prepared. We got tons of zippers. We're zipper people. We're not zipper people. Not, not zipper. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so Next is our headgear. We do hat. have a headlamp. Um, will we need it? Probably not. Well, but you should prepare. you have it? Yes, absolutely. You have to be prepared for any sort of... It just really, it just blinded me. For oh any my God. sort of... Um, what do you, what do you, there, there's a lot of features on this yes. thing. Here's a blinker. Here's it is. off. It's actually, here's on. Wait, if, no, no, it's actually um, censored, so is it turn now? on and oh turn off. Oh my gosh, on. look at that! So it's easier when it's on your head, you don't have to look for the, for the buttons. Oh my god, I found out now. I didn't know this. This is like <laughs> magic to me. Now the one thing I do know is this. There's actually a red light on here, and the reason why is, this is something I actually just learned recently. When, for rescue. No, when it's nighttime, it's not bright. For nighttime, if you're looking to read something, your eyes go into, obviously, a night mode, so you can see in the dark. Well, the color red, and this is actually something I was learning from my drone okay. test, my pilot's license, the color red does not make your eye change from night mode to day mode. Because let's say you're, you're waking up in the middle of the night, okay. okay, and you turn on a light. It's so bright, it hurts your eyes, and then when you're ready to go back to sleep, your eyes are already screwed up. But with a red light, that doesn't happen. So, pretty cool, huh? It does not break that night mode on your eyes. Yeah, but also oh, it's, really it bright. flickers, so I'm assuming that it's for rescuing. No, mine doesn't flicker. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Click on the button. I did. It doesn't do that. There's no flickering. See? It's constantly off. Yours do flicker. What the red light does flicker, so... Here's flickering now. Anyway, so those are our lights. Also Amazon. Yeah. You like how we're having this conversation now? Yeah. It's also good to know, you know, you're here before you actually head into the mountains. And um, it's chargeable. Rechargeable. So plugs underneath of it. 
Next is yeah, make sure you do charge all your gear. Next is going to be, I have my, my fork knife you in know, here. I don't have it on me. Yours is, in, I think, on the yeah. treadmill. But this is a can opener, it's a fork, it's a knife, it's a beer opener. So thank you to my grandmother who thought of us, stainless steel. Yeah, um, I do it, have a... That's a propellant, propellant for, for, for uh, mosquitoes. It comes packed. Of two, two. One for her so, and one for her. Absolutely. So we'll definitely use that. I really don't like any and, In my top bag here, I've got three bars and a lot of peanuts. Four bars and a lot of peanuts. Well, I guess I'm just going to eat the one that I have. Here, I'll, <laughs> let, I'll let you have one of my bars. Thank you. And you can have one of my peanuts. I appreciate that. Okay. I have food now. So we, our food did not come yet, so. Yeah, our food should be in the mail actually today. Wait, you got tissues in there too, right? I have tissues in there. Tissues in there. I have these guys. Oh, this I is just, my favorite trail mix. I just gave you a bag of peanuts. That's it. You gave it away. Can't, can't get it back now. Anyway, so I'm opening up my big cart. I have one. I just give you one of my bars. Wow. I guess I'll starve with a mountain. You'll starve. I'll starve it up. Here are my things, the poles. Next is my actually water bottle. Mm -hmm. Like that's our towel. I have you can show them the towel. towels just because we've learned in the previous hike that someone needs a towel. Change of, also, it's a very good idea to bring a change of clothes just in case if you fall into a waterfall. <laughs> I didn't fall into a waterfall. Yeah, you did. I yeah, fell, you did. I fell into the stream as it went down. There was a little like pond and I slipped into that. It, let and, me just explain. It's a cascading stuck. waterfall. And I got stuck. I couldn't get out. And I did, I hurt my back. back. Your backpack saved, saved my you. life, yes. If not, my back would have probably been broken. So this is just a towel that folds up into this little silicon. It's got holes in the other side, so if it gets wet, it can breathe. Yeah. Um, so so this having always, a towel is good. And this is about six feet long. It's just very thin, Yeah. but it's also that material that soaks it, things up. So it's pretty and good. And dries really fast. So it's always good to have on you. Um, I have my other water bottle because we have another one because you, you know this one's gonna have our energy energy drinks energy probably drink like in it. one of the getaways nope. or something. And this is REI. This was on sale, so I got very lucky with that. Yes. Um, we have you want to go for your blanket? Ooh, my we, blanket we is have blankets right here. Um, this is so when we get to the top, we can actually sit down and eat our lunch. We need a lunch. It's folded so up very nicely. Yeah, I don't want to unfold it really, but, but like this is a blanket. So yeah. Pretty cool. You can metal spike it into the ground so it doesn't move. It is waterproof. Uh, which is uh, pretty amazing. You're gonna bring out your... Yeah. So these are our crampons. Now crampons are useful in many different environments and they have many different spike kinds. Spike and snow. So these you would, like if you're looking at videos of Everest and the light going up the mountain, that's what you think of as a crampon. But the different versions of it, like this one, is actually just for, I guess, just muddy areas with a little bit of ice. Well, so. yes, um, mud and snow. Well, mostly snow, not mud, like yeah. icy. And these ones, steep hills. Just imagine that they go on your shoe very tightly. So you go like this, you put it on, and then you just continue hiking. It they, makes life a lot easier when yes, you're going so downhill. Always make sure they're very tight on your shoes and they're not sliding. You have to make sure they're tight. I think these ones would go to Amazon as well. Correct. Right. These are Amazon as well. So this is a great thing to have. We're not expecting to see any snow or ice on the mountain, but you know what? It's always good to have just in case. I mean, I don't know if we'll, I don't think we'll be using no. them, but. Next is, and this is the only thing that I'm carrying, is our first aid kit. I think you'll be carrying the food because of yes. uh, this one. Always have a first aid kit. I'm not gonna go into details about everything inside, but I mean, it's got everything from fishing wire to a compass to, Little needles to it looks like even I don't know what this is. What is this? oh that's the fishing stuff. That's it's a whistle. Stuff. This is to cut a this is actually to cut wood. It's a little saw. We've got all of your regular medications, yeah. your band-aids, so, anti uh, oh sorry, you got that. Here's the here. whistle. There's a knife. I mean Yes, so there is a knife, there is a flashlight. There's a lot of stuff in here. Once again, I'm not gonna go into details. I'll put the link to this in the actual thing. Inside it actually comes with instructions on how to actually say if someone gets hurt, how to actually fix it on a trail because it's actually right up if, here. If you are say three miles up this so thing. It's a little tiny a booklet where you can unfold and it tells you exactly what happened and how minor injury, broken bones, broken bones, burns, and what to use and how to use it. How to do CPR, 
how to do, I mean, there's a lot of so information. So very useful, very, very useful. Illness, like special hazard, like this is, this is absolutely amazing. Absolutely I must have, have always one. have, and we've been right as a kit pretty much everywhere we go. Yes. In the car, here, you have one at work. Yes. And we have you one here at home. absolutely have to have it. And uh, the last thing in our bags right now is our water. Yeah. So, um, for those who don't know how these things work with the Osprey, which is one of the reasons why we got it, is because... See? Our what? bags are different, so we have just a little bit different setup. My water bladder is on the inside, his on the outside of his backpack. So yeah. mine clips in on the inside. And take a look at it. It's got a hose, which you can put on the outside of your bag, uh, and then use a magnet to put on here. It has a hard back as well, so it doesn't fold on, fold on itself when it's half empty. And so when you're hiking, you just take this off, you drink your water, you put it yeah. back on. We used to have a two liter, but when we did the last mountain, which was about 3,000 feet, we quickly realized two liters was not enough, and which is why we yeah. have the other bottles here with another 32 ounces, plus the three liters here, and we're all set. On top of that, I think that is all the gear. I mean, obviously there are some things you're missing. We have the food that will be coming yeah. in shortly. We have our energy gels, which are little like, what would you, what would they're you call energy them? gels, it's they're I, um, SIS. Um, they're just gonna give you a little bit more energy when you get tired on a hike, probably halfway through. Halfway through. Yeah. And um, you normally drink them when you're um, when you're running marathons. And that I, really helps you. I think the only other thing, I mean, shoes wise, where you, I'm wearing boots because I like it when the ankles are completely covered and all tight, tight. Because been, there's been many instances where I've pretty much rolled yes. my ankle and thank God it was on there. If not, my ankle would have been a horrible pain. And when you're 2,000 feet up and you get to walk all the way down. That's no good. Two thousand. So we're going uh, for five. yeah, we're going for five. And now all of this training, every single time we climb another mountain, we get more experience, and we always push ourselves to get better. Well, it turns out the one after this, Julie actually just told me today, we're going to Ukraine in August, and of course we'll be filming all of that for you guys, just like we did with the Italy trip yes. and the other Ukraine trip. This is the first time since July of 2019 we're going. So uh, long story short, we'll be filming all of that in the mountain that we're <coughs> sorry. And the mountain we're going to there is how tall? 6,000? It is 6,000 feet. Um, it is the tallest mountain in Ukraine called Hovedla. So we'll be hiking that. So that's going to be great and we'll film that and of course just all of our trips heading out there, what we're doing out there. You know, I, I've done a lot of cool Ukrainian videos. If you want to check them out, there's actually a playlist showing all of those vlogs. I mean, we went into, we, we've climbed through bunkers, we've talked about history of underground tunnels in Ukraine, we've gone to the Golden Gates, we've gone to all of these cool like history museums and yeah. things like that, because I drag you to all the history museums. But um, I want to thank you guys for joining us. We will have a video out for you guys, uh, hopefully the Monday after or Tuesday after, it all depends what happens. One more important thing, when you uh, go, download your maps, um, especially if you're going high into the mountains you're not going to get any reception so yes. it's always good to have a paper map um and a downloaded maps i use all trail maps um we did pay for the year subscription so i just download all of the maps onto my phone and onto my garden so we'll be using that to make sure that we don't go off road so, so it's always good to have one you know? we will try to put some stuff on instagram uh but i don't know what the satellite or tower is going to be like over there so you can we check might, it on we Instagram. We might do it once we descend uh, and get to the hotel. We might just upload like all of them at once at the end of the day. Yep. Once we get to the hotel, just because you know you this can't upload a good yeah. quality of video or a picture when you don't have really good reception. When you don't have a reception, you try to get a lot of material up there. Yeah. It doesn't work out. Um, now between now and then, I'll have a couple mask singer videos for you guys to check out. But uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. This was a definitely a different angle than I ever expected. Yes. It's actually hard to film. Those. We're like we're like hanging on our but, carpet. I've never spent this but, much time wait, on my carpet. One before. more thing though, if you have any suggestions on what to bring with us, if we're missing something, oh yeah, please let us know. Please let us know. We're learning as we go. We're not professional hikers. In no way you should do the exactly the same thing <laughs> that we're doing. This is just showing we're you not we're suggesting doing. anything. Um, we're just learning as we go, really. And and I uh, hope you guys learn something too. If you've never actually heard of this stuff before, because I mean we live obviously we in honestly, New Jersey. We watch videos. We um, 
follow a lot of haikus. I mean, and you've sort been of following like, the Everest season yes, this entire and so, year. And sort of like, well, we're training for our ultimate hike, but that's years into making. Nepal! We, no, not we'll Everest. See. We're not going not, to Everest. No, we're not going to Everest, but we, are, are we? but we are going nearby Everest. So um, it's just like one of those things that we're learning, learning. And getting in shape. Exactly. But anyway, thank you guys. I hope you stay safe and sound. And make sure you join us on Instagram at Joey Contino and at Julia Contino too, right? No. No? What is it? Julia Contino underscore. Underscore two. So there's no two. There's no two? <laughs> just Julia, Julia Contino, Contino underscore? Yes. Oh, you're Julia the only Contino. one. So am I. Because Julia nice Contino to meet you. was already taken. Oh, so you're so not the underscore. only one. Well, then I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> my name is taken too. My dad has the same name. Anyway, that's a lot of information for you guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.